I know some niggas who hurt me, they hurt me. Take Took y'all through the center with me today, baby. Jerry don't want me to make real it. Real solid shit, real yeah, motion. I know that he yeah. work, only work. Prosecutors wanna help me, right. 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 Hoping they don't do me dirty, yeah. me dirty. Yeah. So. Forty, I got to be dirty. Bah. Shoot on go, he shoot perfect. I keep a hundred on me. After what they done to bleed. The same ones who put them to sleep. We all used to be in the cheek. How could you do me so dirty? Y'all know what it is, Capital Vision. I told y'all I'm bringing out this Carolina Chronicles, man. Go get the book, Gasoline Chronicles, you dig? Yes, sir. Hey, follow my nigga Carolina L, man. He one of the best with this photography, too, out here, man. Yeah. Videography, all that, man. Wow. I ain't gonna say, I'm gonna Drop shit, drop shit, nigga. Real plug shit, my nigga. Everybody already know. Wake up past 8 to late, my nigga. If you ain't on no money, you funny, bro. Real nigga shit, I'm telling you. That broke shit is a disease out here, bro. You need to get you and get gone, bro. Bid you a safety net, my nigga. Take care of you and your own. If that really good to you, then fuck it, bro. I'm getting money. Yeah. Walk out. What? That nigga. Oh, God. Yeah. Let me bring y'all over here. Now, this is my eighth yeah. dog. What about the guy down nigga from the mud? You feel me? What's up? What's up? What's up? My nigga Oso, man. Tell him what you got going on, Oso. Coach Oso Diddy, you already know I'm a rap shit. You know, keep it thorough out here. Black Sox game coming. The album about to drop. They fuck with big homies for a long ass time. Real motherfuckers. You already know this shit. This shit is day shit. Yeah. Yeah. The only people got gas ain't the sick though, you hear me? Yeah. 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 Gasoline yeah. Chronicles, baby. Gasoline Chronicles, baby. I'm telling you, fuck me. Like I said, man, stay tuned, man. We're gonna upload all this to the new tour. I think, man, I'm gonna give y'all some of the realest hit up on these front lines that you ever gonna see in the city, man. I'm gonna take you in the trenches and the trenches and all that shit. But niggas can't go, won't go, ain't gonna go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hold yes, 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 on, y'all. Be safe, man. Stay tuned. Get away from my car. Get away from my car. In 2001, the only original king left in the gang was a violent and powerful leader, Roscoe Abel. Everybody from the city got a little bit of king in them. If you know anything about king, aka Kusha is one of the guys. You got to know about my man Roscoe, man. So I'm gonna get out of the way. I'm gonna let my man talk to you. A lot of individuals don't know and understand what king actually represents and stand for. You know, like you just said, it's crucial Islamic Nubian gods. You know, crucial because we take everything to the extreme. Islamic because we stand on Islam, the principles of Islam, you know, which is peace. Nubian because it's a new beginning, a new being, trying to transform from the gangster mentality into a spiritual mentality, into a revolutionary mentality. Gods because that's your birthright. Every black man is a god. You know, that's 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 just your birthright from the beginning. So speak on that too, Scope, because a lot of people ain't hip. Like I'm gonna show you right here. The man, he got an ink though. Ever since I know him, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he educated me on a lot of stuff. And I'm not a god about it, but I do adhere to a lot of their ideology. So a lot of individuals, when we say that we God, they look at it as being blasphemy. But, you know, but even in the Bible it says, ye are all gods, church of the most high God. You know, so when we say that we God, we're speaking upon God body. It's, I don't look towards no spiritual being that exists in the sky. To me, that's like 
child's play, like telling the child it's a such thing as Santa Claus, right, right. you know, but I acknowledge energy, and that energy can't be created nor destroyed, you know, so at the end of the day, when I say I'm God, that same energy that exists within the universe exists within inside of each every black individual, but due to the fact that we inside of a physical being, our physical composition, then the powers that we're supposed to obtain becomes limited. And what I mean by that is like, if I was to go to the ocean and take a cup with me, and I take that cup and I scoop up a portion of that ocean and, and set that cup on the, on the beach, on the sand, you can't deny that inside that cup exists the ocean. Or you just seen me take the water out the ocean inside the cup. But at the end of the day, that cup limits that water or that ocean inside that cup to be able to bring forth tornadoes, hurricanes, because it's limited within the cup. And that's the same within the physical body. You see what I'm saying? That same energy exists within your body, but by you being in the physical composition, you become limited. You can only do but so much in a physical being. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, being God is just being who you are as a black man. That's your birthright. Because we don't understand when the first man was made manifest, or first man and woman made manifest, they had to come from dirt. The Bible say dirt. The Quran says mud. Look, look, look. See what I'm saying? From the but dirt you came, and from the dirt you shall return. Exactly. Talk to me. So, you know, if, if, if man came from dirt, then have you ever seen white dirt? <laughs> but if you talk about white dirt, don't close you can come to white dirt is sand. <laughs> but sand can't produce life. You see what I'm saying? That's just like you take a European, only thing they can produce is another European. Oh. You take a black man and a black woman, they can produce an albino, which shows forth and prove that we obtain all colors within our physical composition, within our DNA. But at the end of the day, they'll say, oh, you're not God. Eyes, I'm not God. My father, Allah, is God. 22-year-old Roscoe took over. Roscoe Abel was one of the founding members of the Hidden Valley Kings. He was one of the older guys, and a lot of the younger guys looked up to him as a leader. When Roscoe took power, the HBKs were still riding high, confident the police had no idea how extensive their operations were. You don't hear these guys call themselves Hidden Valley Kings. It's not like they walk up to the police and go, yeah, I'm a king. At that point in time, we honestly viewed them as like street punks. We were all kind of new at the whole gang game, you know. Roscoe would take the Hidden Valley Kings to the next level and outside of their secure neighborhood turf. Gangland ain't gonna give you this. At the end of the day, people, a lot of people seen me on Gangland. Right. I didn't never do the interview, but they did the interview and they gave y'all the point of view from the district attorney and the feds. So fuck gangland, cause gangland, that's that's the police, so I'm gonna give y'all my nigga the real and the raw. Y'all can keep going to watch that gangland shit and get your ideology or whatever, but you ain't gonna hear this from me on gangland. Yeah, of course, See, that's one thing the feds know about me. Ever since I was 11, 12 years old, I've always been an activist. A lot of people in my neighborhood looked at me as being strange. It was because I was always pro-black from a young age. See, a lot of people ain't become politically conscious or spiritually conscious until they went to prison or they went to school or whatnot. But I've been like this since I was a kid because I've been doing time since I was 11 years old. You know, but, but a lot of things people don't know about me is that I was never a bully. Right. I hated bullies. And this is how I caught my background because when bullies used to pick on me, cause my mom was very poor, so she couldn't afford nothing for me. I couldn't get the J's everybody in my neighborhood could right, get. Right. I couldn't get the Adidas. So I used to draw little stuff on my shoes to make it like it was named Brand. I got picked on a lot. And I was never a good person, an individual that can crack good jokes. So how do I defend myself? By fighting. But only when I'm provoked. So as time went on and me fighting because of my clothes, my nappy head, my shoes, these individual parents began pressing charges against me, stating that I'm beating up their sons. But getting still, they're not coming out telling their sons, leave that little boy alone. Right. You see what I'm saying? So in the process, I'm gaining, I'm gaining a criminal record. See, and by the fact, on the case that I just got out on, don't you know they use a charge that I committed at the age of 14 to give me 22 years? 
something I did at the age of 14. I'm not even yet old enough to even know my consequences at the end of the day. But they used all that against me in order to enhance me. So at the end of the day, we as a people, man, we have to come together and accumulate our thoughts, accumulate our wealth, and, 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 and just bond, man, and quit all this killing one another. Because at the end of the day, how in the hell you gonna tell me you know you a gangster? But you will see two police officers beat the hell out of a black man. The only thing you can do is sit back and record it or ride off and, and, and talk about what you just seen instead of getting out your car and intervening. Yeah, I understand the police, but at the end of the day, we gotta know and understand we all men, bro. You can't be afraid to stand firm on what you represent and what you believe in as a people. And we as a people has always been caught up in, 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 in material things, such as myself. You know, I get caught up in material things, but at the end of the day, I don't lose focus. I don't lose who I am as an individual. And a lot of times, the things that I do as far as the way I dress, the jury I wear, you know, that's an illusion. And when I mean by an illusion, that's for me to go out into the streets and talk to the youth. Because the youth been programmed to the point where if you ain't got no money, you ain't making no money, they don't want to hear nothing you got to say. Mm. See what I'm saying? But you got a lot of individuals out here that's very conscious, very intelligent. But they don't have the resources in order to get where they need to get to. So therefore, you overlook them and you step over them and you go to the individual who got all this money, all this jewelry, but you don't ask yourself, how did he get this? Can I take this man word on what he's telling me? Because how did he get to the level that he at? How many people he hurt? How many necks he stepped on? You see what I'm saying? Where did he get this wealth from? Because if he hurt a lot of people to get where he at, then that's someone I don't want to listen to unless, unless he done made right with himself and forgave the things that he went through and asked for forgiveness of the things that he did to other people. Under Roscoe's direction, the gang that once stuck to a lucrative drug trade on its home turf began getting into violent altercations with other dealers. The clashes raised the HBK's profile across the city. See, gangland try to make me to be a monster, but they go do that in order for them to get a conviction. They're not gonna say Roscoe is a political activist. They're not gonna say Kings is crucial as long as moving your guard, saying that we transforming from a gangster mentality into a new being, elevating ourselves as being gods. Yeah. And what the fans ain't gonna tell you, bro, there ain't, ain't no rehabilitation in the fans. Skeleton, man, we was in gladiator school for that, man. Yeah, ain't no rehabilitation. Now, when you go to them fed penitentiaries, see, I never did state time. I've been fed since I was 18. See what I'm saying? But inside of that, they don't rehabilitate. You have to be willing to rehabilitate yeah. yourself and surround yourself around individuals that can educate you and teach you. You see what I'm saying? I'm far from a coward, but I realize who my true enemy is. My enemy is the individuals that's keeping me oppressed. My enemy is, I mean, my enemy is the individuals that's keeping us locked down. Those are my true enemies. And by me knowing and understanding that, I'm doing everything within my power, everything within my spirit, and everything within my soul to challenge and fight back. Not only fight back, but also teach the youngest and the youth within these communities on how to stand up and fight back. But at the end of the day, like, again, like I said, man, you know, if you really want to know the real and what's really going on, you know, just contact Sco Able on Facebook or whatnot, right, right. and, and, and I'll reach out to you and we can communicate on that level. No, and and when you set it down, let's go on and interrupt you, brother. When you set it down, get these people uh, out there on what you got going on as far as your uh, mentorship program and everything you're trying to put down in the city. Well, the mentorship program I have is called WL Nola Mentorship Program. And this was created by Kijana Tashiru Ascari. And this is a freedom fighter who's incarcerated uh, in the California prison system. And he turned over um, the power of delicacy towards me. He wanted me to be able to actually go out into the communities and educate the youth on exactly what it is that needs to be done in order for us to get out of the situation that we're in. Uh, WL Nola Mentorship Program is a community-based program. You know, uh, 
At the end of the day, like I was saying, that you're just trying to reach out and save the youth and save our community. And today, I mean, this month is what we call Black August, where we see a ghost. Where we see a ghost, I mean Black August in Swahili. You know, uh, Black August started in 1978 in San Quentin Prison. Um, actually, it was brought about due to the fact of revolutionary figures that existed in the early 70s that stood up and fought for to free us from our oppression and these individuals george lester jackson who was assassinated in san quentin prison on august 21st uh, another one was his younger brother which was jonathan jackson who was murdered in 19 uh 1970 of august 7th uh, another one was joker katari who was assassinated august 1st 1970 uh, get the 1970, I want to say six. And then you had um, W. L. Nolan, who was actually assassinated February 1st of 19. Oh, yeah, I hear these big words. This name is a big word. Do you hear the main word he didn't use describing all of these individuals? Assassinated. Yeah, that's what they're gonna do us. You understand what I'm saying? That's why so many people scared to really stand up and really take a stand because they know they become vulnerable. They most likely become a martyr. You know what I'm saying? Excuse me, Joe Tar was assassinated in 78. Not 76, 78. And these individuals considered freedom fighters who was considered a threat to the prison administration in, 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 in California prison system. Because these individuals, the only thing they did was teach the masses within the prison system about who their oppressor was and due to the fact that it's right here they became a threat within that system so the prison system came up with a method on how to go about killing these young black men these young black men was in their early 20s back in the 70s a lot of them was members of the black panther party you know but due to the fact that the black panther party started to go lean more towards uh the right they developed what you would call the Black Gorilla Family. And the Black Gorilla Family came about in order to um, counterattack the fights that was going on within San Quentin, Folsom, Soledad. Because you had a lot of racist Europeans that was uh, part of the, uh, the, um, the AB, which is called the Aryan Brotherhood. And what they would do was attack the young blacks that was in the system. Because the same way in society, while people was pushed to the back of the bus, pushed to the back of the line, these same things was going on within the prison system. They was making the black stand outside in the rain while the white stand up under the, the little shed waiting on them to get fed and things of that nature. So you have brothers like George Jackson, you have brothers like James Carr, Joker Katari, uh, uh, Big Jake Lewis. These brothers stood up and actually fought. And as they began to fight, along with W.L. Nolan and the other Conscious Brothers, that's when the chain of events started to take place. You know, you had the Black Panther Party, you had the Black Liberation Movement, you had the Black Liberation Army, and out of all of this, you had the Black Guerrilla family that was born out of this struggle, you know? But uh, I'm not gonna uh, hold up too much more of y'all time because I wasn't even expecting to be on camera today. But uh, next time, hopefully I'll be more prepared you know, listen, this is the best time. I, I really appreciate you taking the time, brother, to come, you know what I'm saying, and do this with me, man. Like I say, this is my partner, Scope. Hey, y'all seen them on Gang Land, all that bullshit, but now you see him in person, real life, the real person, and, what he, and, and hear what he really stand on and what he about, man. So, man, just, just stay tuned, man. This is the Carolina Chronicle, man. I'm, I'm going to come to y'all with some of the rawest interviews in the city. Oh, shit, no, oh, shit. The beat steady bumping, heads is just rocking. With crazy thoughts in my head, it's gonna drop in. Coso, I'm back up in the kitchen.